So today, yeah. uh, welcome everybody. And then today we are really happy to have a menu venue here to talk about industry for point or to talk about like the predictive maintenance using Arduino Potena H7 and then also Edge Impulse. So uh, could you help me to change the slide? Manu Manon, thank you. Sure. So before, right before the uh, sharing, we would love to sh give a big shout out to our TinyML strategy partners for committing to take TinyML to the next level together. Here we would love to uh, express our gratitude to Analog devices, Aon device, Arm, Deep Light, Edge Impulse, Amazon, Photo Hub, Green Waves Technologies, Gravity Inc., HOTG, ImagineMob, Eternomers, Click Attack, uh, Lantern AI, NSP, uh, Prophecy, Quizo, Quanquen, Re Reality AI, Re Racing, Renaissance, SAP, Seed, Sensio ML, Sony Semiconductor, ST, String Analyzed, uh, Synaptive, SyncSense, and uh, Syntalians. Okay, next slide, please. Here, we would love to give out a reminder for our next TinyML Trailblazer series. This is a series about like sharing about success stories. And this entry, we will have Mona Alaktepe, uh, who is the CEO and CTO and also co-founder at Aon Devices. And then it will be uh, live online on June 7th. So please uh, scan the QR code to register if you are interested. Next slide, please. And then here, we also wanted to uh, give a, like a big picture of our growing TinyML communities. It's a global community with right now have like 9.3 thousand members in 45 groups in 35 countries. And then we are on Meta. And then apart from Meta, we also have like communities on LinkedIn where we have gathered like 2.8 thousand members. And then also uh, we also have like a 6.9 followers on our LinkedIn. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Manaman. And then uh, apart from the global communities, here we would love to uh, having a, a bit self like intro to our like tiny ML Shenzhen communities because this talk is uh, organized by the TinyML Shenzhen committees. Here we also have a meta group here and then also we have a WeChat group. And then uh, last but not least, we are also calling for speakers for our upcoming TinyML talks. So if you would love to share your journeys of TinyML with the whole global communities, please scan the QR code to sign up. Next slide, please. Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, also another reminder that all the TinyML talks will be uploaded to our YouTube channels and then uh, including today's talk. So if you wanted to give like uh, play all the replays, welcome to get that. And then here it's a, another like next TinyML talks. It's a spoiler and then it's on May 31 with like Fendi Alsami who is the assistant professor of University of Nebraska Lincoln. Uh, he will be sharing about ML using microelectronic mechanical systems. So uh, please screenshot to welcome Manny Vannon. So Manny, Manny Vannon, who is the, has been working as a lead engineer on the computer vision platform at Valido. He is pursuing his PhD now in computer visual prediction methods on vehicle control stem stability at VIT University. He passionately created many tiny ML based applications from elephant conservation to the automotive fields. His research work in 2015 holds one Indian patent 
a ominous heater for food pre preservation by the fresh pro uh, process through a low voltage one GBT based single phase inverter model. One of his tiny ML model won as the top five machine learning model in the Elephant Edge contest conducted by the Hester. So now that's welcome, Manny Wagner. Manny Wagner, the floor is thank yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Mani Vandan from India. So uh, as you know, like I'm a lead engineer in a value. And uh, apart from work, I used to work uh, on a tiny ML to create a more real, to solve more real world problems. So uh, I have worked on a more than eight to nine projects in different fields. And uh, so one of the important problems which I have concerned is uh, like uh, predictive maintenance. So in industrial 4.0, when we talk, so why can't we have a very huge, uh, the tiny ML will have a very huge scope on the uh, use cases in the industrial 4.0. So I have taken that as a problem statement and I have created a prototype uh, using an Arduino Potato H7 and the Edge Impulse software. So here in this uh, session, I will be covering how, what is the data set and how I have collected the data set and how I have uh, trained my model, uh, tiny ML model using the Edge Impulse software and uh, how I have deployed back to the real hardware uh, Arduino Potato H7 and I will show the complete demo. So it's like a from scratch to the deployment stage. Uh, I will uh, go through all the session here. Okay, thank you one second. So let's go into uh, the project now. So let's, if you see, uh, regarding the existing predictive maintenance. So let's consider in any industrial, we have a valves and uh, pumps or even a motors or a fans that are the most four common equipments available in any industrials. So let's say in the existing predictive maintenance system. So for that, uh, usually the missionaries will be connected with some sensors like a vibrational sensors or a, a audio uh, data acquisitions or even a thermal data. So all these sensors will collect the data and for processing that data to analyze whether if there is an, any anomaly detection, whether it's an abnormal situation or is there any uh, failure condition is happening in the machineries or not. So for that complete analytics or happening, it's not happening in the microcontroller. So here, they are transferring the huge amount of data through some common gateway. It might be a Wi-Fi or even an Ethernet to some cloud device or cloud storage or even a remote server where all these ML techniques or everything is happening in their cloud. So the data collection is in the one hand and the uh, transmission, transmission is happening through some common gateway and all the analytics and the uh, processing, everything is done in another way. And uh, it's like an, a remote server. So there, uh, there will have a computer monitoring or a phone to detect whether is there any fault or not. So there will be a, some predictive maintenance team will be there. So they will be keep on monitoring that. So this is how the very common uh, existing predictive maintenance system is usually deployed and it's in the practice in the uh, most of the industrials. So uh, in this case, so how the tiny ML will impact that? So uh, I have seen in the two ways. So one of the major advantages of using a tiny ML model in the industrial 4.0 is it will cost, it will cut the cost of the total uh, infrastructure. So let's say from the data collection to transmission the data to some uh, cloud server on the, for a huge set of machinery. Let's say if the industry is, is uh, equipped with around thousand or even uh, 4,000 machineries. So we want a very good and a very cost uh, high uh, uh, infrastructure to collect the data and to transfer the data secured in day. So those are the very challenging situation is happening now. And in the tiny ML model, it will just cut the, all this cost in the infrastructure. So uh, let's see in the slide. So if you have any machineries like a pump or valve in industries, so uh, the hardware will be remain same. The, it might be a sensors like a vibration sensor or an audio data acquisition sensor, some uh, microphones, and this will be connected to some microcontroller. So, what are the uh, common uh, tiny ML supported microcontrollers? So, uh, here I have taken as an Arduino Potato H7. Uh, it has a very good high performance as uh, a clock frequency as 480 megahertz. 
and uh, one MB flash, uh, one MB SRAM, and two MB flash RAM. Oh, sorry, two MB flash memory. And uh, in this, uh, I have collected a, uh, I have used the open source data set. Uh, for the industrial machinery's failure conditions. So the data set is uh, uploaded to the Edgeimple software and I have trained my model there. And after that model training, I deployed that uh, bin file to my microcontroller, which is an Arduino Patanto H7. And uh, uh, then when we connect that into the place, when we replace that to the existing system, uh, the Arduino Patanto will just do all the analytics and do all the predictions in the microcontroller itself. So, so let's say uh, in previous uh, uh, existing, we have to transfer the data, but here we have to just analyze the data on the machineries itself, in the industrial machineries itself. And it just need to just transfer the result to the computer monitoring or a phone monitoring or some predictive maintenance team. So instead of transferring all the data, so uh, it will just transfer only the result. So whether the machine has some fault or some anomaly detection is detected or some over condition, over condition is detected, something like that result will be periodically transmitted to the remote uh, server or uh, uh, computer monitoring uh, for the predictive maintenance. So this way we could able to save a huge amount of time and huge amount of cost in the infrastructure. And the second thing is, uh, the data is more, we have to transfer the data in a more secured way. So when we see in a, a tiny ML model, so all the data will be in the uh, microcontroller, all the analytics, everything will be processing, will be done in the microcontroller itself. So there is no chance of, uh, 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 what to say, in a data pit or any uh, uh, security issues. So that is an another major advantage, uh, which I have seen as a, uh, TinyML have a very good scope in the industrial 4.0, particularly in the predictive maintenance. Okay. So uh, this is a complete overview about uh, my project. Let's go a little more deeper uh, about the data sets now. And uh, for uh, data sets, uh, for my model, I have a unique three different TinyML models, one for a pump, one for a fan, and one for the valves. So all these will be a data sets will contain the audio samples. So for each thing, uh, I will have a audio samples of abnormal and the normal one. And it is a 16 kilohertz audio samples. And for this, I have used the open source data sets, which is a MIMIA, which is nothing but the small functioning industrial machine investigation and inspection. So they, there is a, some uh, very good journal papers and the open source data sets is available already. So I have studied about the paper, what they have done, how they have done the uh, data acquisition. So basically they have uh, collected the data from the pump, fan and valves for different uh, models and also the different conditions like abnormal or normal. So this is how it is done. And uh, I have used the open source data sets and I have uploaded all the data samples to Edgeimple software. So which is a very user friendly, uh, which is known for very user friendly and uh, also for the, uh, uh, it is an open so I mean, it is a free for a developer uh, option. So if you are a developer, if you want to try it out, uh, you can go and just uh, open the Edgeimple, uh, create a free account and you can try it out. So uh, the, these are the uh, very positive in the Edgeimple side and uh, we could able to easily deploy back to the Arduino Potanto H7. So, so these are the two uh, journal papers uh, which have referred for the uh, uh, data sets. So uh, they have explained much detail about how they have uh, collected the data for each missionary. So maybe I'll just give a quick overview about what is there in these uh, papers. So, uh, so in this paper, they have explained like, uh, like let's say in the industry, it's not only the with the fan. So we will have a collection of fan pumps and valves and the slide rails, right? So here, this is how they are set up. So they have the pump, they have the fan, they have the valves and also the slide rails. And they use the eight uh, channel uh, microphone array and uh, so the distance between the microphone to the missionaries, they have also mentioned. So it's like around uh, 50 centimeter from pump to the microphone. And from valve, it is around a 10 centimeter. 
and uh, from fan it is around uh, 50 centimeter from the slide rail it's around uh, 50 centimeter so that's how they place uh, this microphone to collect that data so let's say if we saying a data so what are the anomalous condition is uh, it's going to detect so let's say in a valve so generally in the valve the major operation is just like a open and close okay but what are the possible thing is there might be sometimes it will be uh, opening and closing in a very faster phase or sometimes it may be a very slower phase so based on the uh, content in the valves it might be a liquid or it might be a gaseous so what are the contaminations in the valves due to contamination there will be a problems in the valve opening and uh, closing so that that are the anomalous condition they have recorded so and also for the pump so if you see the pump it will just suck the water and it will or it will discharge to the some water pool so what are the possible anomalous condition here they have taken is it might be a leakage or it might be something like a, a clogging or a contamination kind of thing so these are the conditions they have taken for the uh, pump and for the fan uh, the one of the most common thing is for fan it will be a voltage deviation due to voltage deviation the fan operation will definitely affected and also due to some clogging so these are the anomalous condition so they have taken a normal conditions sample and also for anomalous these are the categories they have collected the data also so uh, let's go a little deeper here so he, this is the uh, uh what to say uh for each uh missionaries how many data is available so generally for a valve they have a seven different models so for a valve there might be a different categories right uh, we can't have a same kind of valves for all the operations so they have taken around uh, zero to zero six so almost uh seven different kinds of valves and for the normal condition they have around uh, 990 uh, or some 992,000 samples. So each sample will be a 10 second audio sample. So for each sample, it's a 10 second data. And uh, they have taken anomalous condition for also. Uh, it is around uh, 120 second. So if you see across everything except the fan, uh, most of the anomalous condition is uh, around average will be 120 to 140. So this is the data sets it's available in uh, open source. and. Uh, I have taken this as a uh, input for training the model and deploying back to the Arduino port Android 7. So let's uh, go a little deeper. Uh, one second. Yes. So this is a paper they have published. And uh, in this paper also, they are explaining the uh, all the frequencies of all the audio samples and uh, uh, regarding the fan and pump everything and uh, so these are the samples they have mentioned in this uh, journal paper and uh, maybe i'll just quickly go through uh, the data sets yeah so this is the data set uh, uh, all the data sets are uh, linked will be available in the slides so maybe after the session you can refer it so in this data sets uh, if you see for a fan uh it it will have a model one zero zero id zero zero means it is one particular model for that model we will have a two section one is for abnormal and another is for a normal condition so uh these are the data sets we have so if you just go through here there are a multiple data sets available for valve pump and uh, uh, fan and slider so maybe i'll just quickly show uh, the data also Just a minute. So yeah, so this is the data of a pump. So you can see uh, ID zero is an audio, uh, audio sam uh, sample for the pump. We will have a normal and abnormal, and we can have this huge amount of data here. So then let's build the tiny ML model now. So uh, for this, I have used the example software and. Uh, if you go to this example software, uh, even this uh, uh, tiny ML model also, I have made it as a, pro a public profile, which you can refer after the session. Uh, so here uh, in a data acquisition session, I've sp uh, split the data into a training for 80% of data and a 20% of data for the testing. So if you see here, uh, it is like around 57 minutes, 10 second data is used for the training. 
So here you can see the upload existing data. Suppose if you want to uh, upload a multiple data, this this is how we have to do. So you can go here, you can go to the palm and uh, ID zero abnormal. So you can just click any or two and uh, you can enter the label also. So here I have uh, mentioned it as abnormal. So once you just begin upload, it will be uploaded to the data set. Since I have already uploaded, I'm just going to the next step now. And if you want to visualize the data, that is also possible here. And uh, the next step is, uh, this is one of the important step where we have to decide how we are going to train the model and what are the inputs and what are the uh, pre-processing uh, uh, DSP we are going to use. So everything is, uh, we are going to set in the create impulse section. Here, I have mentioned it as window sizes 2000 milliseconds and the window increases 1000 milliseconds. Uh, that means like, let's say uh, I'm having a one sample, which is a 10 second data. So I'm mentioning the window size as 2000 milliseconds. So that means uh, for the first two seconds, it will be taken. So that then window increases 1000. So it's like zero to two and one, two, three and uh, three to four. So something like that. So for one sample around a 10 second data, we will have as um, nine sample. So it's like every sample will be a nine, uh, two second data. So that's how it will be splitted in the time series. Because we need only the two second data. We don't need a complete uh, 10 second data. So we are just splitting it. It's like a zero to two, one, two, three, something like that. I'm just splitting it down. And the uh, DSP, I have selected the spectrogram. You can just go here and uh, select the spectrogram here. And in the classification, it's a, a normal uh, a neural network classifier. So the input will be the spectrogram and the output will be abnormal and the normal one. So once we save this one, we will be going to the spectrogram section. If you just look into the spectrogram section, uh, we will have this raw features. The raw features is nothing but the input so what is the input we have for the two second data if you see here it's like zero to two exactly that means uh, zero to two thousand milliseconds so what is how much data we have that is what it is mentioned in the raw feature and after this uh, spectrogram what is the output of that uh, from the dsp block so that is mentioned here as processor feature so this is the processor feature and this is the input for the dsp block and this settings uh, I haven't changed any, uh, added anything. It's a default setting. I left it alone. And uh, I hope uh, uh, you can see the processing time also and uh, device performance. It's like a 179 milliseconds. And also the peak RAM usage will be around a 50K, a 54K peak. So these are the input I could able to get here. Um, let's go to the uh, generator features. So if you see here, uh, for the 57 minutes and 10 second data. So I have already told like for one sample, 10 second data, it will be uh, uh, just uh, uh, split into around a nine sample. So like this, for this amount of time, we have a 3087 uh, samples. So I'm just giving this generic feature. So it will generate uh, features like this where you can see all this uh, 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 generated uh, for abnormal and normal conditions. So here in the Future Explorer, you could be able to see the uh, outcome of this uh, from the DSP block, what are the data is there. That, that's what we are visualizing it in this uh, Future Explorer. So once that is done, then let's go to the uh, neural network. Okay. In the meantime, I will explain the uh, neural network architecture uh, since it's uh, building the net spectrogram now. So in the neural network, uh, in the neural network classifier, uh, for this uh, neural network classifier, the input will be the uh, spectrogram output. 
So the input will be the spectrogram output. And I have used the one dimensional convolution layer. So I have used two set of one dimensional convolution, convolution layer. Then I use it the flattened layers. And then it, it's like a, a sequential one. Then I have used the uh, dense layers, dense neural network layers. And it is connected to the uh, output for the normal and abnormal. So you can see here the uh, one dimensional convolution layer. And again, it's interconnected to the, uh, again, the, uh, uh, another one dimensional conv convolution layer with the pole layer. And then it's went to the uh, flattened layer. So all the data will be just into the single dimensional array. Then it is uh, again interconnected to the dense layers, and then it, it will just connect to the output with the normal or abnormal. So it will just predict that uh, based on the weights and bias, it will just predict what is the uh, 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 we will have the two outputs, right? So what is the uh, predicted score? It may be like a, from zero to one. That's what the predict score. So if it is a 0.95, it's almost like 95 percentage it's detected as maybe a, a, a normal or abnormal. So that is what I have mentioned in this uh, section, neural network settings. So if you just quickly go through here, so input layer is nothing but the, uh, from the spectrogram output, that is the input layer. So I'm using a reshape layer uh, for the 65 columns. And then I have connected the one dimensional convolutional layer, which has eight neurons and a three kernel size. And uh, I also use it the dropout uh, around a 0.25. So uh, in order to avoid the overfitting, uh, I have used the uh, dropout. Uh, yes, Olga. Uh, Olga, you are raising hand or you want to say something? No, no, everything is fine. Please continue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so then I have another uh, one dimensional convolution layer with a dropout as 0.25. So this also used for just uh, avoid the overfitting. And then the flattened layers. And I have used the uh, dense layers as a 20 neurons and the, again a dense layer with the 10 neurons. And the output layer, which will predict whether it's a normal or abnormal. So if you want, uh, if you are more familiar with the Python coding uh, instead of this kind of blocks, or if you want to add any blocks, uh, you just have to click and add extra layer. So we can uh, just uh, add a dense layer or a flat end or drop or anything. So, or else if you want to change the neurons in the dense layer, you can just go ahead and edit that from 10 to 20 or 10 to five. You can just uh, edit and just give an okay. Or else if you want to have a, uh, Python thing, uh, maybe you just have to click the Keras mode. So then it will be uh, in the uh, Python version. So you can just have a look. Uh, if you are a bit more familiar with that uh, basic uh, TensorFlow usage, hope you can uh, correlate what is happening in the beginning. So this is what is a sequential network. And we are just having a reshape and the one dimensional convolution layer. And also uh, we having this. Uh, uh, series of a uh, dense uh, neural networks. So this is how the model is trying. And uh, one second. So for this model, I have used the training cycle as the under, and the learning rate will be a 0 0.005. So the validation data sets is the 20 percentage of data I used for the validation. So once I start the training, this will start the training. Okay, uh, this might take some little more time than expected. Uh, uh, okay, so maybe you have another version just for a backup. So I just go through that uh, uh, instead of waiting for a little more time, it might take uh, four, five to 10 minutes for a training. So I'm just going ahead with another link. So once the model is trained, what we are seeing is like another version. So uh, the same project. So I'm just using an, a clone of that. And here in this, uh, the model is trained with the same uh, uh, configuration. Hope you can see here now. And yes. So once the model is trained, I'm getting the accuracy as a 98.1 percentage 
uh, where it could able to predict the abnormal and the normal cases uh, with a very higher accuracy, which is greater than the 95 percentage. And then let's go. Uh, it's not about only the training, but it, we want to test that also. Like uh, once the model has very good accuracy, it does not might perform poor in the uh, unknown data. So for that, we have a section called the model testing. So in the model testing, I have a, uh, multiple data for the uh, normal conditions and abnormal conditions. So you could see all the data here. Uh, so I want to test all the things. So maybe I can just give a classify all. So, uh, so what it will happen is like it will just feed the data and just uh, analyze the trained model. So what is the expected output? And uh, uh, here I mentioned the expected output as a normal and what is the predicted. So now it's got trained and if you see the modeling results it got around 94.84 but in the training it was around 98 percentage the deviation is if you just quickly uh, go much deeper in the uh, result uh, you can see uh, the reason is for a normal in some condition seven times it is predicted as normal and one times it predicted as abnormal and uh, one more time is predicted as uncertain so as i said before for one sample around 10 second data it will be split into nine sample so based on that it's if you just have that sound plus one plus one it's nine so that's what it means and if you see that sometimes for one particular section of two second data it might go uh, uh, failed one or maybe it, it will not predict uh, as expected so it, it will be displaying it as an abnormal. But if you take the majority, most of the cases, the majority will be in a highly predicted, uh, uh, the right uh, expected outcome only. So if you see in any cases like a two normal, so even here the expected is normal. So maybe uh, in this uh, in this time you can just take the average uh, prediction and uh, you can just omit the uh, very less number. We can have the threshold limit also for that. So in this way we could able to uh improve the accuracy also so this is a modeling uh session and uh, in the testing session so then after that uh we want to just flash that trained model which you have seen now uh to the arduino potato h7 for that we have to go to the deployment session so in the deployment session we have a two section one is for a create library and another is for a uh, build firmware so if you see the create library, we have a uh, inbuilt library for Arduino, which will support for a Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense, and also the Arduino Potanto H7. And also we can just flash to the uh, uh, NVIDIA, or if you want to have a separate or a different microcontrollers, but you want to deploy this uh, model to that, uh, you have an option called a C++ library. So you can just download every files as a C++ library. Then you just have to integrate to your uh, firmware, maybe it's a TI model or a AST microcontroller. So you just have to uh, include that uh, uh, this library to your firmware and you have to build that and you can able to uh, include all this trained model to your microcontroller also or else. There is an another quick way to do that. Uh, these are the build firmware. So in the build firmware, we have a multiple boards, uh, uh, which is like, we just have to select this board and just have to build the uh, firmware. So that we just, once the firmware is ready, we, the next process is like, we have to uh, just flash the bin file so that we can directly see the output in the uh audio potato so it, it will save a lot of time so you can easily correlate so instead of downloading some codes and uh, uh installing the ids and uh, what to say uh visualizing the data and flashing all the steps we can just bypass all the steps we can just quickly go to this bell firmware for this supported microcontrollers and you just have to get the binary file and if you are having a Linux system, Windows system, or a, a, a MacBook. It's uh, we it, all this are supported here. So uh, you have to uh, just flash that bin file to the microcontroller. Then that's all. Uh, we could able to visualize the output here. So I'm just choosing this way. Uh, I'm just going to select the uh, build firmware option with the Arduino Potato H7, and uh, 
there is an another thing is called quantization so hope you some of you uh, all uh, having the uh, very hot topic and the reason uh, thing is like a uh, how to how efficiently we could able to use that uh, uh, tiny ml model or the ml model in the microcontroller so that's how the quantization part will come so in edge impulse they have that eon compiler so the eon compiler will just do uh the optimization for the specific microcontroller and uh, uh it will just uh, evaluate and it will say uh what is the unoptimized flow 32 uh and what will be the resource for the quantized intake model so if you see this comparison uh you can see that uh unoptimized will have the ram usages around 105 kb and but for the quantizer one it will be around 30 kb and also the flash usage uh you can see it, it's almost like uh, 50 percent it got reduced uh, from 103 to 51 and if you see the other challenging is like we should not lose the uh, accuracy also so that's what the young compiler will play as a major role so here we could not lose the uh, accuracy instead of that we have a little more accuracy also and also the latency is got uh, increased as since the uh, uh, resources got reduced obviously the latency will be increased so i'm just going to select the quantized one and uh, build it this one so let's build this one uh it might it will take around uh, two to three minutes uh to build this one so for a quick reference uh, uh i have uh, already downloaded uh bin file maybe i'll just proceed with that okay so this is how the files will be downloaded as a uh, bell farmer you can have look here it's like a bin file and you have a shell script for a Linux system and dot command for the MacBook and uh, dot bat for the Windows system. So it's like a, a very user friendly. So it will work on any system. So I'm going to use the uh, MacBook here. So uh, let's see, uh, I'm having the microcontroller here. So the first step, I have to press this uh, reset button twice to change it to the boot mode. I hope it's clear now. So now you can see that green light is just dimming. Eh? So it indicates that it's in a, a boot mode. And now I'm going to press this flash command. So you can see in the screen. So yeah, it's just finding the Arduino button that it's on. So it's in the flashing section now. Yes, it started erasing the data and uh, started downloading the data. Yes, that's all. So now it flashed the TinyML model into the microcontroller. Okay, and I want to run this model, right? So for that, again, I have to open some terminal and I have to type edge impulse run impulse. This is the command we have to type. So, and also I want to convey one more thing. Uh, for this setup, we want to have this edge impulse CLI uh, installation. So uh, I have mentioned in the, uh, my project link, which will be shared in the PPT. So you can go through or you can go through in the edge impulse website also. We have to have this uh, edge impulse CLI support. So you have to install that, then we have to proceed with this step. Yes, so now you can see uh, it has started the processing and it, it just uh, having the data also. Uh, since I'm talking, this will also uh, detect it as a no abnormal one because this model will knows only the normal and abnormal conditions. So whatever the uh, normal data, like for a, a fan, except that everything will be observed as abnormal. And I could not able to play that uh, real sound effect in the laptop. So maybe if you have any measure, you can try that model and you can just uh, keep it at the distance around uh, 50 centimeters from the uh, uh, machinery, you could able to observe the output. You can see it's for every two seconds, it start infringing and uh, doing this process. Okay. And uh, one more thing uh, regarding this Arduino Potanto, uh, uh we have to use this vision shield uh, for the microphone usage so in this project i have used the 
Lora, uh, Vision Shield, uh, which will have this 320 cross 320 camera and also the uh, two microphones on this board. So using this, I could be able to uh, do this uh, uh, testing and all. And if you have a, uh, a microcontroller and if you have a missionaries, instead of going ahead with this uh, uh, open source data sets, you can just also follow the reference of that uh, paper. And you can also just create your own data sets. So you can have to connect to the uh, agent plus model using the any micro tiny ML supported microcontroller. And you can do this uh, data acquisition, which I have shown it in the uh, journal paper. So uh, I have go ahead uh, done this and yeah. So I have explained the complete set here, and I have also mentioned about the journal paper link uh, where I have uh, gone through the uh, placement of the microphones and the data set examples and the real data set and in whatever I have taken that is mentioned in this link. And also I have done whatever I explained. I have made it as a uh, Axter project also, you can just go ahead with this uh, link, how I have built everything with the very clear steps. And uh, just uh, that's all I'm done with the presentation. Thank you everyone for the uh, session. Thank you, Manu Manan, for the amazing like demo and also the sharing. So I think we got quite a lot of like questions for you. Some, some are very tricky ones. So the first one, like the data, data, the data acquisition seems like a big challenge here. Curious if you have any thoughts on how you obtain data for a custom use case where you didn't already have a data set available. So okay. any thoughts for this one? Yes, yes, uh, that also the one of the challenging situation as I am the uh, kind of a person, I'm not into the any predictive maintenance uh, industry. So I am a uh, kind of person who just creates some ideas uh, based on the problem set when I will solve it. So for me, it's a very challenging is to find a data set or to get the data set. So that's how I just referred a multiple journal papers. So if you just go ahead with some journal papers, which I mentioned in this previous slide, so that will have a huge amount of data sets for different industrial missionaries uh, with abnormal and normal. Even there are some uh, papers also available regarding the uh, thermal data also. So that's how I took that and I have trained my model. So it can be this way. So suppose if you are a person working in some industry with the predictive maintenance, so maybe you can just try the available data set and train the model and see how effective it is. And then you can go ahead with the, some data acquisition in the real uh, missionaries. Then you can compare and you can just improve your model accuracy also. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay, the other question. Do you have anything to compensate background noise, which can be possible on production size and can affect the classification, right? Yes, that is, uh, it's like we have to include in the pre-processing. So as I mentioned here, uh, uh, even in the paper, it's like uh, we have to place the uh, microcontroller in that particular, uh, what to say, uh, uh, distance between the fans and the rails and this kind. So uh, we can take it in this way. Suppose we are training with some model without any noise, with all the data, and we just simply just go and with place it with some real environment with complete noise environment. Then obviously the data, the model will get failed uh, if you not predict accuracy. So the one major thing is we have to see where we are going to deploy the model. So we have to collect the data in the real and real case environment. And uh, for the uh, noise filtering, uh, I guess uh, we have to include uh, all this in the pre-processing stage. So. Uh, uh, if, uh, since I have used the pre, uh, already available data sets, I have not used those kind of a noise filtering. Suppose if you have any noise filtering algorithms or a Python code for that, uh, it's, it's easy for to include that in the edge impulse. So that way you can able to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Okay, a follow-up question for this. Did you really go to a factory to collect all the like data? 
for the sums mm. and everything else. Where did you uh, collect the uh, obtain the data? Yes. Uh, so uh, as I have already shown, uh, so it's like uh, from the paper uh, I've done. Like uh, so, there is a very well published uh, journal papers of that. So I just referred mm -hmm. that. So there are multiple, uh, uh, not a tiny ML, but there are multiple uh, ML models are published uh, uh, by using this data set. So I have referred mm -hmm. this data set and how they have trained, I mean, not about training, sorry. How uh, uh. they have collected that data. So I just observed that. So these are the things, how they place the microphone and how they place the, uh, the distance between pump, valve, everything. So how, what is the microphone they have used? And everything is in this paper. And uh, once again, I'll show you. So this is the data set for the complete uh, 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 for industrial machinery. So I used this data set for mm -hmm. training my tiny ML model. So this, sorry, I have done. So you can see it's around 81,000 downloads for this data set and uh, 35,000. So the one ah. thing I have changed here is uh, uh, I have included this in the tiny ML use cases. So. Ah, okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, another question. Do you know of any tiny ML hardware that you can actually train on the same hardware where the model is going to live or to be deployed in an mm -hmm. automated way? Like, uh, for example, like a camera that can receive pictures of your face and train itself to recognize it? Mm -hmm. Did you know any of this kind of like hardware that can do it? Uh, sorry, could you repeat? I think uh, I yeah, sure. It. Uh, it's it's a question about like, do you have any other like tiny ML hardware recommendation uh, that you can actually train on the same hardware where the model is going to deploy it? Like, okay. and then, for example, like uh, we are using a camera that can receive pictures of your face, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it can train it itself to recognize the face, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so if you just go ahead uh, with this, uh, uh, what to say, uh, examples, uh, there are multiple uh, tiny ML supported uh, hardware is there. So I could suggest uh, Arduino Potanto, which will have with the vision still for the uh, training the model for the camera input and also for the audio input. And if you want to go for a cheaper one, I could suggest uh, 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 the recent one as ESPI and uh, and also the Sony S presence also. So uh, if you just go with uh, 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 into my Axter account, I have done a projects using the Sony S presence also. So for training the model using the camera. So these are the hardware I can suggest. And uh, not only that, there are multiple hardware uh, which is available. Maybe I have not tested. Maybe maybe that will also be a equally potential one. Maybe you can try that. Uh, based on your other ability in your region. Mm -hmm. Awesome. OK. Uh, I think, uh, let me check. Like, uh, there is another question about, like, Potena H7 has a ARM M7 and M4, right? Which processor do, does your code run on? And then how many circles does it take? OK. So it's a very good question. So it's an uh, um, M7, uh, it's used in this uh, uh, running the my model. And the total cycles uh, uh, you could see in this, uh, sorry. It will just take around uh, two seconds, actually. Uh, maybe uh, I'll go through this. Yeah, it's showing. Let's just for, for, for processing, it shows one seventy nine. But mm -hmm. if you see this output, uh, I'll show. You. Okay, I'm just running that, so you can see. Uh, the interval is will be around up to uh, yes, so the, the recording session time will be a two seconds because I said uh, for each uh, sample it will be a two second 
so that will take for two seconds but for this processing everything it will take around uh, 25 to 30 milliseconds for a dsp and the classification will take around uh, four milliseconds mm-hmm. <coughs> yes awesome. good and then you also mentioned that you are using the mimic data set right uh, there yes. is a question about like have you run the model on some real data not just the data from the data set what's what was the accuracy about it uh, okay so i have run the uh, included some data set uh, for the pump actually so uh, mm-hmm. that for that uh, it might be like around uh, 80 percentage uh, some two second data it will just predict it as c uh, what you say uh, abnormal for the normal case so ideally what i can say uh, uh, we should not uh, what is it combine the uh, uh, mm-hmm. already data set available with the uh, your real environment data because uh, the thing is they followed based on the paper they followed for that particular equipment and the comp- uh, with that particular distance they have collected and also the microphone will differ but i'm just projecting like this is the way and this is the potential use case of the tiny ml in the predictive and uh, maintenance so the same way instead of following i just mentioned about the paper right mm-hmm. so the same way you can also collect the data instead of collecting that you can just place uh, if you have a, a pump or uh, any uh, real uh, machine you just place it the same over just with a 50 centimeter data uh, i mean sorry, 50 centimeter length and you can just collect the data for abnormal and uh, normal and you can also do that so that way mm-hmm. okay as i see there are a lot of, like questions coming in but uh let's pick up the last questions and then for okay. that those unreasoned questions please go to our tiny ml forum for more like discussion, in-depth discussion with uh, Manu Vannon. So the last question is like, uh, by using the tiny ML, the result basically anything that is beyond their limit, the result will be uploaded to the remote server or processing unit. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, so, uh, so you are saying like, uh, uh, the result will be communicated or uh, transferred to the another, uh, uh, some remote system that's what the question right is it possible mm-hmm. so okay. yeah i yeah so i think uh, that's what i have explained in the uh, pre uh, the initial slides itself so the all the prediction will be done all the, all the processing will be done in the microcontroller we'll just mm-hmm. transfer the data to the uh, some common gateway so let's say for this uh, uh, arduino patento with some vision seal it will have that LoRaWAN connection and also the wi-fi and also the bluetooth and also it mm-hmm. also suppose the uh, ethernet also suppose uh, if you're having any this type of connections so the predicted result alone we can able to transfer for every uh, two seconds uh, to some uh, uh, some applications so just uh, we have to build some application just to monitor the, uh, the predicted results yeah awesome okay uh, I think we, we, we have the, the, the time for Q&A session is up. Uh, Manu Fenton, could you go to your like contact page, contact slide? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, everyone, uh, if you have more questions about uh, for Manu Fenton, you can contact me through like the email here. And also uh, he has a Hester page. You can find all the project, amazing project he did. And I also, he, he has a YouTube channel as well. So uh, feel free to screenshot this page and then to get in touch. Okay. Uh, okay, here. Uh, so before we closing up, we would love to give another big shout out to our TinyML strategy partners for committing to take TinyML to the next level together. Next slide. Here, we would love to bring you next slides, Manu Vedan. Yes, I uh, think. Uh, there might be some two second delay if that, that's ah, okay. So this is the Palantium strategy partners, ARM, ARM AI virtual tech talks. Next, please. Okay. Edge Impulse and the leading edge machine learning platform. Uh, Qualcomm, advancing AI research to make efficient AI ubiquitous. Syntadian, end-to-end deep learning solution for TinyML and Edge AI. Next, please.
Next, please. And also deep light, fattest video analytics solutions on ARM CPUs. Next, please. Also click attack the global IoT solutions and reality AI add advanced sensing to your product with Edge AI and also TinyML. Renaissance, broad and, scale, broad and scalable edge computing portfolio. And also our gold strategy partner, PhotoHub, Messing Integrated, Messing Integrated Enable Edge Intelligence. Next, please. Lantern AI, Adaptive AI for the Intelligent Net, NSP. Next, please. Also, C Studio deploy TinyML into the real world plug and play machine learning. Next, please. Sensor ML builds more IoT sensor devices from data. ST Live argumented. Also, SingSense. And also to our silver strategy partners, AM Device, MR, Great. Uh, Green Waves, Property Inc., HOTG, ImagineMob, Itamers, Prophecy, Quizzle, Racing, SAP, and also Shortening. And also, last reminder for our next TinyML Talks, please tune in on uh, May 31st. We will have Fadi Elsin, the assistant professor at University of Nebraska. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you to Thank all you. for Thank joining you. from all uh, from anywhere from the world. Thank you, Manu Venom, for this amazing talk. Thank you so much.